What's going on, everybody? Happy Saturday. As you can see, not at Nashville, not at Fishers. Decided to stay home this weekend, get some stuff done. But we were talking last night on overtime about SGC authenticated or graded a fake uh, card out there. It was recent. I wasn't really tracking this, and after overtime, I had three different emails. So thank you, everybody. I got the link here to Blowouts. So we're going to look at that. We're going to look at the Bonds. Uh, SGC card, we're going to talk about the cards from 05 through 07 that year, specifically only tops. And then, just so you guys know, I'm going to show you, Barry Bonds has changed his auto so much over time. It's one of those autographs to where you really got to know what you're doing. I'm not going to lie. I'm not perfect on this stuff, but I did learn something today that I didn't know before. Um, and we'll talk about that as well, too. So let's pull up the blog forum page real quick. So as you guys can see, this was an item, and no way do they think that the seller knew or the buyer knew on to this. And this is some really good stuff, because it talks about the Bowman, or the buybacks that Topps does. And to where there's a point to where there's really not a com complete list out there. They're saying there's stuff that has appeared that aren't out there and stuff like that there. And I remember this conversation back during this time frame that there was not really a complete buyback autograph checklist out there. Now, if there is to this day, somebody let me know and we'll put a video up and we'll peg it in Discord too. Um, but I don't know of one at all. So on here, it says SGC both authenticated and graded the card, which is described on the flip. Which is the slab, if you don't know, a lot of these guys call it the flip. Uh, okay, so to anyone's knowledge, there were only two 2006 Bowman Originals buyback audio variants. As you can see below there, where it says B-20 and B-C-10, one's Bowman out of 20, one's Bowman Chrome out of 10. Just so everybody understands, that's where they're getting their information on what the card was. There's nothing saying 2004 Bowman Heritage was part of that product with a buyback. So that was the first thing that threw the flag up to a lot of these heavy bonds collectors out there that really understand his autos. And it's good to have people like that that aren't afraid to push this stuff out because somebody just like, I want to go buy Barry Bonds autographs because there's not a lot out there. Got to know your stuff. Got to know your stuff on this. So he talks about there's an incomplete checklist of buybacks that year. So there are apparently autos that exist that don't appear on the Beckett or TCDB checklist, but no serious bonds collector has any reason to believe that there are any other buyback autos released from 2006 Bowman. Which is a good thing because he belongs to one of these uh, bonds groups that are very heavy into it. And there's a lot of different, like, Facebook groups, Reddit groups, stuff like that there with serious people and collectors of this stuff. They can pick this stuff out, and this is where this guy found the information onto it. So if you look here, every license pack release Bonds autograph from 05, 07 has at least three stickers in the back. One from Tops, one from MLB, and one from Bonds himself. Note, this is only Tops. This does not include Fleer and, and any other product out there. Now, I did recall for a while back that Bonds actually did uh, put his own stickers on the back when he autographed stuff. But it was only really for tops from what I recall during that year. I've tried to flip through some stuff and look in to get more information on it. But it's one of them catchy things on to it. A lot of times what I like to do is before I buy a card raw, I go look at the past sold ones onto it. And try to compare stuff like that because... Back in the day, they used these stickers, and they were, you could get them off the cards, so I could have, like, had, I'm just going to throw out, like, a Will Clark buyback auto, pull that sticker off, put it onto another Topps card, and say, this is the Bonds, one hand number, and all that stuff there. So that's one of the sketchy parts of the whole thing. A lot of people were saying, why not just put the sticker on, have some type of laminate over top to where you can't peel it off, the whole back of the card, this was all talks years and years ago in forums. So that's pretty much, I just want to see here. He talks about there was a bunch of these that fled the, the hobby and eBay about four years ago. So that's kind of good because now we know this stuff's out there. And you got to be really, really catchy on this stuff. 
okay, $700, you know, what was paid. But I can't pull these whole pictures up here. But they're saying this card passed the eBay authentic authenticity guarantee. There we go. Let's get a tongue twister out of the way. It had positive lead feedback left the next day after purchasing. That's kind of crazy. But, I mean, here's the thing. If I sold a card today and it's within my general local area, say it's even in, like, uh, New Albany, Indiana, it'll get there the next day. So... Also, the expected delivery dates on that's what's expected because they're giving, the, I think, the seller like three days to buy plus the shipping time. That stuff's going to change. Never go with that expected delivery date. That's supposed to be like the latest you're supposed to get it on average. So I, I kind of go away from that piece right there. But the positive feedback left the next day after purchasing, we would have to know where the seller was located and where the buyer's located at to really have a good idea onto it. So, I mean, even like you could say both people lived in LA, you know, something like that there. But I just know for my local area, I've have sent stuff with it that's considered local to the Louisville hub and it'll get there the next day. Even though it might be an hour and a half drive to two hours from there, they'll get it the next day. Same with Lexington. I mean, it's like an hour, depending on where I go, like an hour and a half, hour, 45 minutes. So, just some little heads up on to, I mean, it does look fishy, I got it, but until you really dig into it, you can't say much on to it. And there's the, it was supposed to pass the uh, authenticity guarantee, and that's where it really throws in a loop, because it's supposed to get mailed to this place to, you know, get the guarantee done, make it next day kind of weird on to. Now, you know, the seller and buyer could both, well, the buyer could have messed up, just posted positive feedback because the guy did too. But this is where the big skepticism comes in. How did it go, you know, from like, you know, bought one day, delivered the next day, and it went through this guarantee? Kind of fishy on that. I, I will agree on to that part there. But until you um, really look at it there, just so you guys know, if it doesn't have the authentic authenticity guarantee, gosh, if I can get that word out right today, it'd be amazing you can possibly receive it the next day. And never go off that expected delivery date on to it as well, too. All right. Enough with that. I'll put a link to this blowout forum if you guys want to read through the lots and lots of messages on here. But this was great information. Great information. Thank you, everybody, who sent it to me. I appreciate it last night. So I wanted to at least do my due diligence and get this video out today. All right. So... Now we're going to have picture time. There's the Bonds Auto front that was graded by SGC. There's the back. So, what they're saying here, by looking at this on the back, there's only one sticker on this card. Now, some people are saying the stickers, though, for this card were somehow top loaded or something onto it but just it kind of felt funky onto it whenever you start looking this stuff up and find the actual raw card uh because on the top part of it you'll see a sticker and on the bottom you'll see a sticker but nowhere do you see the bonds um sticker that he's normally put onto this so i'm gonna flip back here we're gonna go back back up just so you guys can see all this Pull this back up. So I started looking because it, you know, I'm curiosity. There's tons of bonds autos sold here. So we'll go here. Three stickers, as you guys can see right there. You got the bonds one, the MLB one. The bonds is the far right one, just so everybody's tracking. But here's the funny piece with it all. No database out there, to my knowledge. You go on there, put these numbers in. It tells you what they're supposed to go to. At the same time frame, if anybody reprinted these, it'd be, you know, one of those things to where we're going to have to start getting into dot matrixes onto it to make sure that the stickers all line up with the correct uh, font, print, and all that other stuff onto it. All right, next. Sterling, same year, right? There's your three stickers all again. Triple threads. Beckett Authenticated. Uh, this, this might have a better picture. You got one right here. 
two right here. I even went a little bit further because I said, okay, it's just 2006. Let's just see if 2005 has them. There's 2005 bonds you guys can see. Tops right there. Come up there, three stickers. All right, pull this. Actually, I want to show you one more thing here. Well, actually, we'll save that for last. So, the sticker piece onto does not add up, right? This card's not in any database out there saying a Bowman Heritage exists out there. Starts to get real crazy onto it all. So, looking at the Barry Bonds autograph, kind of looks a little funky dory onto it. Like I said, Bonds has changed his autographs the way they look over time. I just know this because I used to be real big into it, and I know when I look at some stuff for sale, I'm like, man, there's another different autograph of them out there. Ziggy, this is why you don't change your autograph every other time. <laughs> I know he did a, uh, put a comment saying about changing his autograph every time. All right, let's take a look here. So, boom, boom, oops. What am I missing here? This one? All right, oops, click too much there. So these are all from the 2006 tops. I wanted to stay same year on to it. And all I did was basically cut this out of the pictures and put it up here and blew them up a little bit so you guys could see. Let me pull this one down just a tad. There we go. That you guys could see. Ah, can't get to this one now. There we go. All right, you, I did it again. I covered up that Y. There we go. That looks good. All right. So you guys can see there is a difference into it. The one that's done on that Bowman Heritage that's in the SGC slab, the autographs look a lot different. A lot. The Bs are the first thing that I looked at, and I was like, wow, that doesn't look like his autograph. But sign a lot could get sloppy, but this is out of 10, too, so... It, it just doesn't... The two autographs don't look the same. Even when I look at his last name where... Uh, the B is out again. I look at the O. I'm looking where the D and how he kind of loops it into an S kind of looked a little off to me. But the B's were the biggest thing onto it that I just didn't like myself. All right, we're going to go back into here. Now, I just want to show you guys, whenever we look at this stuff, I just put in Bonds Auto up here, and I probably should have put Tops. But... You can start looking. Here's a Barry Bonds auto right here from 05. I think I actually cut that one. We can go and look at the SP here from Upper Deck. This is where it starts to get interesting. 2020 Fleer Skybox. Look, it looks like he has three initials there now. SPX looks a lot different from 2000. Uh, I gotta wait sure because I, I probably it might have look how this one here looks for immaculate again we go look at the 97 tops different signature on to it for Barry Bonds so it looks like he just changes his signature a lot onto this stuff but I what I always try to do to compare is look at that year and how he was signing the products and hopefully try to even break it down to the product because you're going to see where there's different autographs of him out there. And you're like, well, how do I know that one's real and everything else? You can see 99. There was there was a good one on here. Classics. There's Tribute 101. But the Bs have pretty much been consistent. Except for this one here, which I'm guessing is an in-person autograph. And they might have caught him somewhere and he just scribbled it on being a nice guy that day. But you can look, here's another one, 94 tops. Looks a little bit different. You look go to transcend it. Even the bees have the little hook there on transcend it. He has the nicer signature there. But just a lot of stuff to look like. This is Bobby Bonds. I no, wait. This is Barry Bonds right down here, as you guys can see. I, I saw Bobby in the cut cutter here. But if you look at, it looks like three initials going across there. The 
best I can tell anybody is just do your due diligence if you're going to get into Bonds Autos. Because a lot of this stuff will look like it. It could come close. There's a lot of forgeries out there. Uh, this is just one offhand where they're saying this card was never manufactured this way. And then it breaks it down into the sticker background. Where there's not three stickers on the back that's like every other card out there. And then we even go into the point of looking at the autograph itself. And to me, there's no hooks on the B. The B line that goes down and Barry doesn't look right. Even the B in Bonds doesn't look right at all. So just a lot there is to it out there. Uh, I wish there was some buybacks that sold. I'm just flipping through here to see if I could find one real quick, but... I don't see it offhand. It might end up taking like a more extensive search in one of the bigger databases. It'll go back more in 60 days, 90 days, other than eBay to find one. But I wasn't too sure many people seen this. I wanted to put out a video onto it today just so people have an understanding that when you're buying a Topps autograph from Barry Bonds from 05 through, what was it, 07, you're supposed to have those three stickers on the back. I really didn't even know there was a Major League Baseball sticker on the back. That just shows that, you know, there's so much that goes on out there, how stuff changed over time. So I did remember the Barry Bonds did put the stickers on back a certain years, but I wouldn't have thought about the Major League Baseball one, to be honest, unless I was a huge super collector of the stuff, then I'd know what to look for. And those guys that are super collectors out there, they're putting this information out. It's really good. Uh, it helps out in the long run, to, so you know, and plus, at the same time frame, knowing that there was a lot of these generated, like, four years ago, flooding the market, be on the lookout. And just because it's slabbed, doesn't always mean it's correct. There's still that, you know, percentage out there, whether it's, like, 0.01% or 1% or 3% of graded cards out there just aren't correct. Could be higher, could be lower, I'm just throwing numbers out there. It may not be right overall. Alright guys, appreciate you guys watching the video. Catch you all next one.